All right, pre-calc, we're going to do a few more things with these uh, trig functions to deal with our right triangles. Uh, first thing we do is review a couple things that um, I hope you remember from geometry. If not, uh, I get a couple sketches on here trying to help you out. 45, 45, 90. Right? That means our sides should be 1, 1, and the square root of 2 to get those things filled in. Okay, so the upside of this is now you need less and less information provided you have a special right triangle. Uh, so if we know the sides are, or the angles are 45, 45, that means the sides that correlate should be the same. So if one side is x, the other one must be x, right? Or if we use numbers, it's 1, 1, and root 2. Okay, so if we just say it's some arbitrary variable like x, it must be x root 2. So those three things go together. And if I were to like uh, underline or circle the other stuff, right? So sides, 1, 1, root 2. So how do we translate that? Well, if we had another one over here, we said, well, one of the legs is 5, so the other one must be 5, so the hypotenuse must be 5 root 2. Again, I think it's covered relatively well in geometry, so I won't spend too much time here on it this evening. Um, the next one, 30, 60, 90, so 1 root 3 and 2. I'm going to go in that order, so 30 correlates to the 1. All right, 60 is the root 3. And then, of course, the hypotenuse being the largest number turns out to be 2. All right, and the next one just uh, sketched in here was, OK, so if we had x for the 30, right, the 60 is then x root 3. And that means the hypotenuse must be 2x. Okay, Fitting that same thing we had on the previous one. All right, last one, we're just going to throw in some numbers. All right, so let's just say the side is 4. Okay, the hypotenuse is going to be double that, and then we need 4 root 3 for that 60 degree angle. So those are just a quick review of those 30, 60, 90, and 45, 45, 90. So that's the first step. Second step is then to use it, right? So what's the point of having it if we don't use it somewhere? So notice that my angles are marked that they're supposed to be the same thing. So 45 and 45. Don't really need them uh, written in there, but I now have one leg is 5, so the other one must be 5. So the hypotenuse, y, must be 5 square root 2. That's not too bad. All right. Uh, what I did in the middle is uh, first 30, 60, 90. So just recall what we had. 30 is the 1. 60 gives me the root 3. And then the y is the 2. So uh, typically, you know, we'd really like to have the x value first because that would make this a whole lot easier. But uh, this one just isn't set that way. So that means um, if I multiply this side by uh, something, right, I would end up with uh, root 3. So that means I have 10 equals x times root 3 right? because that's the result of what should happen, right? Because if it did root 3, uh, I would end up with my 10. So what times that is going to give me 10? That's kind of what we're after. All right, so we're going to divide by the square root of 3. And we're like, oh, that's great and all, but we don't really accept that written this way, right? So we have to rationalize the denominator because we want to make sure we're writing these as accurately as possible. So root 3, root 3 gives me a real 3. Uh, so that gives me that side x way over here. Right, so that turns out to be 1. That turns out to be 1. So the next thing we have to do is double that. So if it took 10 root 3 over 3 and multiply by 2, that would give me 20 root 3 over 3. 20 root 3 over 3. Okay, so that one we have to work a little bit backwards. And obviously the 30, 60, 90 is going to be a little bit harder. Okay, 30, 60, 90 is a little bit harder. Okay, so here's what we have. Um, so what do we got? We have the uh, hypotenuse is 6. Okay, so this must be 30. Okay, so that means this is 2. So this one has to be 1. Okay, so that's pretty easy. We're going to do half of that. So that's 3. So y is 3. And then what happens here is we end up with 3 root 3 to get that last side. Because we have to take that one value and then multiply it by root 3. So those aren't too, too bad. Okay. The toughest one is the one in the middle. Um, so some conversions that we're working with. Uh, one thing that we dealt with in great deal in the last week was 2 pi equals, right, and radians is 360 degrees. 
So to make sure we can at least mentally do some of these basics. Okay, and I highlighted that nice one in green, but honestly, the thing we used most was pi was 180. Um, you know, just using kind of that derivative from there. Uh, so once we see that, okay, that becomes a little bit easier and everything kind of falls in place. So what's half of 180 is 90, what's one third of 180 is 60, uh, what's one fourth is 45, and what's one sixth is 30. So these are some values that we want to have kind of right on hand and not have a big deal with so we understand what is going on. All right, next thing we want to check is how can we use this now that we know that pi over six is 30 degrees, now we're thinking, okay, sine of 30 degrees. Well, I want to make sure that my calculator is in the correct mode uh, so I can kind of figure out what the answer should be to get started with, right? So how do we do that? So I'm going to check the mode on your calculator. And for me, I'm looking at this fourth line. See radian degree, degree is highlighted. I made sure that was already the case. Okay, so I know that I'm in degrees. Okay, so now I'm going to do second mode and just quit that. All right, so we said sine of 30 degrees. Well, look at that, it's 0. 0.5. Well, why is it 0. 0.5? Let's figure that out right, as we work with our 30, 60, 90. Okay, so as we take a look at this one, so sine 30 is going to be 1 half. That means opposite is 1. The hypotenuse is two. So this must be my 30 degrees. Okay, and we know that the 60 degree would be the square root of three. Okay, so sine gives me one half. Okay, what about the other one? Uh, secant, okay, so remember secant uh, comes from cosine adjacent over hypotenuse, but it's the inverse. Okay, so this actually means the hypotenuse over the adjacent. Well, if it says 45, right, this must be 45, 45, 90. And we can just throw in our ones for each side. So we have root two. Okay, so what's the hypotenuse? Root two over one. Okay, so we would get that the secant is the square root of secant of 45 degrees should be the square root of two. And we'll keep it just that way. Okay, so just being able to translate between the two is gonna make at least some of these easier and more applicable so we can deal with it that way. Okay, so let's work backwards. Right, so to kind of show you what was going on there. So right now you see a square root of three and a two, right? So hopefully you're thinking, okay, if square root of three and a two, this must be dealing with a 30, 60, 90. And we know if we have 30 here, we got one, we get two, we get root three. And if we're talking about cosine, we're talking about the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So the adjacent side and the hypotenuse. So if I'm looking for the adjacent side to be the square root of three, I have to be dealing with 30 degrees. So this should be 30 degrees because right now we're looking for the degree measure out of the whole thing. All right, so cosine, so we have the same thing going on. So I could rewrite all this stuff, but I'm just going to skip straight to adjacent over the hypotenuse. Well, since we know that it's uh, 1, 1, and uh, root 2, it really doesn't matter which 45 I pick, because they're both going to have 1 as an adjacent, and 2, and square root of 2 is the hypotenuse. So I know that we must be dealing with 45 degrees for the angle measurement. It's so working a little bit out of there. Okay, so that's the first chunk of what we have. So off to the right I have where you can just try a few of those out. Might be a good time to kind of break up the video and try those out as you work. Okay, evaluate without using a calculator. So we have to make sure that you understand that pi over four, remember pi is 180 divided by four. So what are we looking for? what angle measure are we talking about, and what can we call those sides? All right, so as we move into some of the day three work, okay, so we just wanna be able to solve 
for any of these missing sides, what's going on. Okay, so we kind of started this, um, no big deal. So now we're just trying to identify, okay, if I need this side, how do I solve it using my trig uh, ratios? Again, make sure you're in degree mode uh, so that we get the same answers here. And again, I'll show you how to do that real quick. All right, so if it's based on 60 degrees, this is the adjacent and the hypotenuse. Okay, so we're dealing with that. We're talking about cosine of 60 degrees and we're trying to get x over five. So let's pull that up and let's go with cosine of 60 equals and then we want that to be times five. Okay, so 2.5 should be the adjacent side, 2.5. Oh my goodness, what did we do that for? It's a 30, 60, 90, right? So it should be half of that because we're talking about the reference angle from 30 now. All right, so finally we'll get one that's kind of new and we won't have anything else to deal with it. Okay, so based on 25, this is opposite and this is adjacent. So that tells me I'm talking about TOA. So tangent of 25 degrees is 10 over x, opposite over adjacent. All right, so we're gonna need 10. Eventually, as we rearrange this, uh, we're gonna solve, and it's gonna be 10 divided by tangent of 25. 10 divided by tangent of 25. I can close that or leave it open, it really doesn't matter. So we get 21.45. Okay, and that's going to be that missing adjacent side. Okay, and it starts to make sense because if this is 25, I can fill in the rest of it, right? And do 90 minus 25. So we get 65 degrees here. Okay, so X should be more than 10, and then the hypotenuse should be even greater than that. Uh, last one we have in this set here. Okay, so we're looking at is this opposite and the hypotenuse. Okay, so it seems like so. So sine of 32 degrees equals 12 over x. So eventually we're going to rearrange this until we do 12 divided by sine of 32. Right, and I think I have that down here as 22.64. Okay, and we'll show you one more in the calculator here. So 12 divided by sine of 32. All right, 22.64. Six, four. Okay, good. All right, so we got that down. All right, next thing we have to do is kind of do this in reverse. So this is my reference angle that I'm working everything off of. All right, uh, so this is opposite, so I'm not going to use that, but I do have the adjacent and I have the hypotenuse. So if I'm dealing with uh, adjacent and hypotenuse, that means I'm talking about uh, chi, right? So the next thing we're going to do is realize that we're going to use the second function and get a little ne negative exponent on there. So it's going to be cosine of the negative first, and then we're going to have the adjacent 4 over 7. All right, and here's what it looks like on the calculator. So let me move this over so you can see both. So the second function, cosine. So there's that little negative exponent, and I went 4 divided by 7. We'll throw that in there. I know I'm in degree mode because I've already checked that a couple times here. So I got 55. 0.15 degrees. Okay, so that'll give me the angle measurement. All right, so obviously I can use Pythagorean theorem and get my missing side over here. And now that I know one angle measurement, these are assumed to be right angles. All right, so I can do 90 minus this 55.15, and then we're in pretty good shape here. All right, so we do the same thing with our other measurements here. I'm going to give you some final answers. So if you want to pause and give these a try, remember this is opposite and adjacent, so tangent, negative first. Right, opposite is three, square root of five for the adjacent. Then we should get 53.30 degrees. And our last one, you would end up getting 43.81 degrees. So give that a little bit of time, make sure you're good with those as well. All right, um, what else we have here today? Just a little bit more. So what I might ask you to do is just kind of fill in everything with this circle, everything at all. Okay, so easiest thing to do is find that C. Uh, angle C is going to be, what, 33 degrees here. Okay, this is to be a right angle. And we know the hypotenuse right now, so we can fill in our other sides by solving that. Okay, so that means uh, BC 
Again, working just like the last triangle, but we have to fill in all the sides. So side BC, I had 10.06, and that gives me 6.54 over here for AB as we work through that. Okay, so if you have any questions with those, please review that last part of the video, and we'll go over some of those in class. All right, same thing here. Right, we have um, the opposite side here based on our given angle, the one we're trying to find, and the hypotenuse. So that's our reference angle. Uh, so if I have opposite hypotenuse, we're going to be working through so. So first thing I'm going to do is find that angle. It should be a right, right triangle, of course. Okay, so our sine to the negative first of 5 sixth. Okay, so we're going to find out that our reference angle here is 56.4 degrees. And then what we can do is kind of snowball the rest. So what's this missing side? And then what's our other missing angle? So we have everything filled out. Okay, so again, I'm going to make sure you are in degree mode. Uh, if you took a break at any point in here, you want to make sure you have that straightened out. Okay, so the, uh, the weird thing about our trig functions is you notice that when you did a uh, sine and the second function, it gave you just the negative first, right? It doesn't actually change out the letters tell you that it's uh, that cosecant. Uh, so you just have to realize what you're working with and how to move those things around. So to make sure you're familiar with that. All right, uh, for the most part, if you are in degree, you'll know that you're working with degrees because there's a degree symbol, right? So whether it's um, regular or it's the first part of it before minutes and seconds, okay? And if there's a pi, you're probably in radians, but notice it, it's not always there, right? It just says 2.3. Okay, you're in radians uh, only because there's no degree symbol on it. Okay, so always looking for that. Um, what do we got? Uh, so when you take the trig function of your angle, your answer is the ratio of related sides. Okay, so if you do a trig function and you put an angle in it, that means we're finding some one of the sides. And if you use uh, an inverse trig function for what we're doing, you're finding an angle. Okay, so you're going to find a side versus an angle. Okay, inverses are always going to be angles. All right, um, this one, uh, 3a, was kind of uh, interesting. So if we give you one thing, but I ask you for uh, an inverse of it, well, if we can find one part of it, like uh, cosecant and sine are inverses. So if this is 2 over 1, if for some reason I asked you just for the sine of that theta, you would just flip it over and make it 1 half. So it's kind of useful. Uh, in the correct situation here. Okay. Uh, just to build on that, we talk about cosecant of 25 degrees. Okay, so that means we can actually take the entire function and flip it over. So instead of just saying the sides and their relationship, we can also talk about the angles that are going to be flip flopped as well. All right. So a couple other ones we can try out. Um, honestly, I really don't know how much you're going to use this stuff here. Okay, well, maybe A, probably not so much B, uh, but I just want to make sure you understood that all those things are related and do go together. Okay, a little bit longer video today. Um, did try and shorten it a little bit, but uh, I don't think it did a good job of that. So we'll see. All right, so a couple of these to try out. Right, remember, if you're in degree mode versus radian mode and how we can get those on our calculator. So make sure you can change those back and forth and still type them in appropriately.